Brothers and sisters, my Easter season message today is intended for everyone. To all such I speak of the loneliest journey ever made and the unending blessings it brought to all in the human family. I speak of the Savior's solitary task of shouldering alone the burden of our salvation. Rightly, he would say, I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold me. As President Uchtdorf so beautifully noted earlier, we know from Scripture that Jesus' messianic arrival in Jerusalem on the Sunday preceding Passover, a day directly analogous to this very morning, this was a great public moment. But eagerness to continue walking with him would quickly begin to wane. Soon enough, he was arraigned before the Israelite leaders of the day. In their rush to judgment, these men and their counsels declared their verdict quickly and angrily. What further need have we of witnesses, they cried. He's worthy of death. Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor in Judea, did so twice. The second time declaring to the crowd, I, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man. Then in an act as unconscionable as it was illogical, Pilate scourged Jesus and delivered him to be crucified. Pilate's freshly washed hands could not have been more stained or more unclean. It's one of the ironies of history that sitting with Jesus in prison was a real blasphemer, a murderer, a revolutionary known as Barabbas, a name or title in Aramaic meaning son of the father. Free to release one prisoner in the spirit of the Passover tradition, Pilate asked the people, Whither of the twain will ye that I release unto you? And they said, Barabbas, so one godless son of the Father, was set free, while a truly divine son of his heavenly Father moved on to crucifixion. We know the divine plan required Jesus to be crucified, but it is wrenching to think that one of his special witnesses who sat at his feet and heard him pray and watched him heal and felt his touch could betray him and all that he was for 30 pieces of silver. Never in the history of this world has so little money purchased so much infamy. We are not the ones to judge Judas's fate. But Jesus said of his betrayer, good were it for this man if he had not been born. Of course, others among the believers had their difficult moments as well. Following the Last Supper, Jesus left Peter, James, and John to wait while he ventured into the Garden of Gethsemane alone. Falling on his face in prayer, sorrowful unto death, the record says, his sweat came as great drops of blood as he pled with the Father to let this crushing, brutal cup pass from him. But of course, it could not pass. Returning from such anguished prayer, he found his three chief disciples asleep prompting him to ask, Could ye not watch with me one hour? So it happens two more times, until on his third return, he says compassionately, 
sleep on now. there would be no rest for him. Thus, of divine necessity, the supporting circle around Jesus gets smaller and smaller and smaller, giving significance to Matthew's short verse, all the disciples left and fled. Peter stayed near enough to be recognized and confronted. John stood at the foot of the cross with Jesus' mother, especially and always the blessed women in the Savior's life, stayed as close to him as they could. But essentially, his lonely journey back to his father continued without comfort or companionship. Now, I speak very carefully, even reverently, of what may have been the most difficult moment in all of this solitary journey to atonement. I speak of those final moments for which Jesus must have been prepared intellectually and physically, but which he may not have fully anticipated emotionally and spiritually that concluding descent into the paralyzing despair of divine withdrawal when he cries in ultimate loneliness, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Trumpeted from the summit of Calvary is the truth that we will never be left alone nor unaided, even if sometimes we may feel that we are. Truly, the Redeemer of us all said, I will not leave you comfortless. My Father and I will come to you. My other plea, brothers and sisters, at Easter time is that these scenes of Christ's lonely sacrifice laced with moments of denial and abandonment and at least once outright betrayal must never be reenacted by us. He has walked alone once. Now may I ask that never again Will he have to confront sin without aid and assistance? That he never again will be found unresponsive or see unresponsive onlookers when he sees you and me along his Via Dolorosa in our present day. As we approach this Holy Week, Passover Thursday with its Paschal Lamb, Atoning Friday with its cross, Resurrection Sunday with its empty tomb. May we declare ourselves to be more fully disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, not in word only and not in the flush of comfortable times, but in deed and in courage and in faith, including when the path is lonely. And when our cross is difficult to bear, this Easter week and always, may we stand by Jesus Christ at all times and in all things and in all places that we may be in even until death. For surely that is how he stood by us when it was unto death and when he had to stand entirely and utterly alone. In the sacred name of Jesus Christ, amen.